life of a homemaker can feel very repetitive, very mundane, ordinary, imperfect, but beautiful all at the same time. So today I'm going to share with you one of those ordinary days in the life of a homemaker. We are on a little bit of a post-Christmas break right now, so life is moving just a bit slower. You can probably hear that I picked up a bug that's making it difficult to talk, but I'm going to push through anyways. This morning, I've been sitting around sipping coffee and chatting with Luke until about 8 a.m. Victor actually is sleeping in later than usual, much later than usual. He's actually been waking up pretty early lately, but... Last night, I kept him out. We went to my sister's birthday party, and I guess because of that, he slept in a little bit later. I don't have anything planned for breakfast, but I do have a few things sitting in the fridge that will work just perfectly for breakfast. And then for lunch, I noticed in the fridge, I have one pound of sausage that's thawed out in the fridge, and I have a roast. So I grabbed another pound of sausage out of the deep freeze outside, set it on the counter, for a easy lunch today. We're just going to do soup with sausage. I'll get the roast in low and slow, serve that later with some roasted vegetables for dinner. I have some brioche dough hanging out in the fridge and some lard that's in this pot here on the back of the stove. I made the brioche dough several days ago. I had a little bit left over, put it in a glass container with the lid on it. As you can see, it fermented in the fridge. It it ferments a lot more slowly, but it does ferment and push the lid up a bit. I should have put it in a larger container because the top did dry out just a touch. That's okay though. It will still be delicious as homemade donuts. So I'm just going to take this brioche dough that I made several days ago that's been sitting in the fridge break off little sections of it and fry it in lard for some quick donuts. I'm going to toss them in cinnamon sugar. Now I also did feed my sourdough starter because this afternoon I'm going to get bread going. That is a daily thing around here, especially in the middle of the week. Sometimes on the weekends, I let the bread making lapse, but during the week, I like to keep it going. We always like to have bread around here. If I'm If I'm feeling extra ambitious on a Thursday or Friday, I'll make up a double batch that will carry us through the weekend as well. With older kids and just kids in general, this house, this kitchen is not completely my own, obviously. We have a lot going on in here. They're doing something this morning. Luke's dad actually came by and he had a project that he wanted them to work on for his grandma. They have a few art supplies out on the counter. And then I know my oldest two kids have a few projects they want to work on today in the kitchen, some baking projects. We got some flowers that my father-in-law brought for my daughter's 15th birthday that we had recently. Days in the kitchen for me aren't linear, if that's the right word to use. It's not like a schedule where we make breakfast at this certain time, then we clean it up. We're kind of cooking, cleaning, in and out. Maybe in a perfect world, it would look like that, but I don't really do it that way. I just try to stay on top of things, clean as I cook throughout the day. There's always food going, people in and out. I think one thing that has changed me as a homemaker is getting more comfortable with everything not being perfect, everything not being a system with charts. Maybe it's my personality or maybe it's just the way 
you know, we've had more kids, they've gotten older, they have their own things and seeing that everything can't be in a tidy little box with perfectly laid out systems. I remember whenever my kids were little, whenever I just had a couple and they were all under a certain age, I had a very set breakfast time, nap time. I had this paper on the fridge that showed which day of the week I did certain things. So I think it was like Monday was laundry, Tuesday was floors. There was a day for kitchen, baseboards, bathrooms. I don't really remember. But now I feel like my homemaking is more on the fly and I don't feel like it's worse because of it. I just stay busy. I do what I can. I see what needs to be done. I try to just do the next thing that needs my attention and not try to worry too much about or spend too much energy thinking about how to make the job easier, if that makes sense. I just try to keep moving, imperfect as it may be. And a lot of things I do in my home are very imperfect. My sister has six kids and she's a homemaker as well. And we have a repeat conversation, so one that we enjoy talking about pretty regularly, about all the things in our homes or with our kids that we used to think you had to do it a certain way and then finding out there weren't really any negative consequences to doing it in a little bit of a different way. I won't go into all of the things, but there are tons. Like just an example would be folding laundry perfectly or meal planning. Our list, my sister and I are different because we have different things that bother us or that we value. But nonetheless, we have each found our own grooves and our own ways to make our homes run more smoothly and efficiently. Now I want to take a quick break to tell you about something that we have been loving in our home. I want to share with you today's video sponsor, Haya. We really focus on feeding the kids from scratch, simple, basic ingredients, but that does not mean that I have the time or bandwidth to worry about every single thing that they might be missing or things that they are given. So though I do cook from scratch here, we make our bread, we drink high quality raw milk. We definitely also eat candy, sugar. Uh, we are given things. We go out and about, we go to parties. And so my kids come across that. So to fill in some of those gaps and the things that my kids are missing, we enjoy Haya vitamins. Now the kids love taking them because of course they are delicious, but I like them because it's a daily children's vitamin that's cleaner and tastier. Always with zero added sugar, zero gummy junk. That way I can be confident knowing that my kids are getting the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Typical children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise filled with two teaspoons of sugar, healthy chemicals, and other gummy junk that growing kids should never eat. Haya is designed for kids ages two and up and sent straight to your door in a package families love so parents can have one less thing to worry about. They also send letter stickers so kids can decorate their own bottle, put their name on it. If you have lots of kids, you're trying to keep track of like I do here. 93% of kids don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. So Haya helps to fill in those most common gaps. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. It's also non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, and everything else you can't imagine. Haya is offering my viewers 50% off your first month with my link, hayahealth.com forward slash boom50. It'll also be linked in the description box below. share 20 minute little sections of your life on the internet. There's a lot that we forget happens in between times or behind the scenes. And we can think that we're the only ones who experience things like interruptions, things like kids being whiny or fussy. And I just want to tell you that all of that is uh, happening here too but it still makes the homemaking tasks worth doing. I think a lot of times we blame our kids for not being able to get stuff done around the house and 
kids definitely do make homemaking more challenging. I mean, without without somebody uh, leaving out toys or walking through with their shoes or even just living in a house. You don't have to be doing anything wrong or breaking any rules for you to make a mess in a house. You just have to be living there, eating there, um, sleeping there. And that's the kind of thing that happens. I mean, our mudroom here, we sweep this all the time. It might look like we never clean this or sweep this, but we actually do. And those of you who have a lot of people in your family um, completely relate to that and know that we probably do uh, clean this room multiple times every week. So many times though, it's not so much that it's impossible to get things done with people around who are kind of undoing what you're possibly doing. But instead, I find it can be an inventory issue or not having a plan or a general flow in the kitchen. So these are things that over time I've learned how to do, how to make sure that there's meat thought out in the fridge that can be the base for a meal, no matter if I have a plan, a specific plan, or just a general knowledge of a bunch of different things that I can throw together really easily an arsenal of easy, fast meals, the staples stocked in my fridge and my pantry, high quantities of freezer items and dried goods, cans, etc. that I know I can always pull from. And then the inventory issue is such a thing. I find myself constantly decluttering clothing we aren't using, kitchen items we aren't using. I'm noticing right now, since it's just after Christmas, I'm already spending more time putting certain things back in the proper places and where they go. And that's totally fine. And we need to teach our kids to put things away. But everybody probably just needs a little bit less inventory. At least that's the case for my own home. And I can tell and I can feel it whenever things have gotten out of hand. We try to keep things very easy to manage. So I have a sock bin for all of my kids. I do laundry every single day. It's kind of all hands on deck. Kids help put it away. Everybody knows that if the washer's full, start it. We're not super diligent about sorting clothes or doing everything perfectly. We just keep it flowing. I'm also not a huge um, folder of clothing and rags, and I should probably replace a lot of these, but done is definitely better than perfect. I used to, whenever I was first a homemaker, I didn't go through this amount of rags, but I find it really easy to clean the kitchen whenever I just do, and then wash and repeat over and over again. So yes, this is a lot of rags, and we probably used them all in the last day or two. We still have onions and carrots from the garden, and so I'm gonna make a real simple soup with that sausage I set out earlier. I had one pound sitting in the fridge already thawed, and then one that I got out of the freezer this morning and just let thaw at room temperature. I had some broth made. I just added in some garlic, onions, carrots, potatoes, sausage, broth, salt, and let that simmer. And then I don't think I actually show it here, but Johanna also made some ice cream. We make ice cream from raw milk pretty regularly around here. You know, speaking earlier of the way that we do things now, if you know you have children, things are a little bit different than how you used to do them. Sometimes we fall into the trap of thinking that just because they're different and it's definitely not as easy as it was to get things done um, whenever there are different interruptions or obstacles 
that you weren't used to before doesn't mean they're not doing just in a little bit of a different, imperfect way. Over the years, I've just learned to do those things when it's loud, when it's messy, with kids at my feet or in a wrap or when they nap. That's all just the flow of a bustling household. And, you know, for me, having a large family means that I needed to figure out how to keep running the home or doing the things that I want to learn and explore, like making sourdough bread when I have toddlers at my feet, because this isn't just a season. I mean, it is a season. Ultimately, someday I won't have toddlers at my feet, but it's a very long season for me. Uh, My oldest daughter just turned 15. I have a five-month-old, and so it's been a very long season, one that I'm not just going to get through and move on, one that I'm want to learn how to continue improving and growing my skills as a homemaker, even with the interruptions. going to keep dinner super simple tonight. One of my favorite things to make is something like a roast or a roasted chicken, some kind of large cut of meat that can cook throughout the day or the afternoon, and then roasted vegetables. We have some beets from Azure Standard, some carrots from the garden, some Brussels sprouts that I just got from Walmart. So a whole bunch of different places, but nonetheless, all things that will taste delicious when sprinkled with olive oil and salt and baked at a high temperature until they are beautifully roasted. The way I like to make a roast. We get grass-fed grain finished, but finished on non-GMO grain from my sister's farm. And I put it in a cast iron Dutch oven with some oil or butter, sear it on all four sides or whatever side you can find on that roast. I like to really lock in all the juices by searing it really hot. Then I add wine or broth. In today's case, I added wine and onions and then put it in the oven on about 300 degrees for as long as I can, just depending on when I got it in the oven. The longer it cooks at a slow, low temperature, the more tender it becomes. We also have some bread, so I'm just going to do some sourdough toast with butter with the roasted veggies. That always really rounds out a meal to add a carb to the dripping. So the wine and liquid it was cooked in, plus what was released what juices were released from the roast i add a bit of flour and salt to create a nice gravy of course you don't have to do this you can just put the juices over top but this makes it to where it coats the veggies and the meat a little bit better and can be more usable instead of just pooling up on the plate i used to complain about winter but i have been loving sitting in my bath for an hour at night after putting the kids to bed for a little while victor will sit in his swing and i just sit and soak and really relax i hope you had a very merry christmas and i will see you in 2024